From Boise to Middleton, the 5A and 4A Southern Idaho Conferences feature 20 of the largest schools in Idaho. Highlighting the big plays and big stories from Idaho's biggest schools, this is the SIC PrepCast with Wayne DeZubak. That's right. Welcome into a new feature here on IdahoSports.com. Each and every week, we are going to be breaking down the biggest stories across the 5A and 4A landscape in District 3, better known as the SIC or Southern Idaho Conference. I'm Brandon Bainey, and I can't think of a more perfect person to break down the SIC every week than Wayne DeZubak. Wayne, how are you? I'm doing great, Brandon. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. I, I, I'm having a hard time believing we're ready to rock and roll with high school football. It's just uh, the summer's gone just way too fast. Yeah, it seems like it was like last week we were inside the uh, Idaho Center in Nampa doing yeah. uh, state <laughs> basketball, right? Yeah, it was. We were sitting down there just kind of doing the games, and now here we are getting ready to to go. And when you think about it, we're into August, and just in about three weeks, we're going to be rolling here. I mean, we got a game the 21st over at Holt Arena, you know, just like that. So you've got, you know, a big kickoff to that season. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, so this is going to be a new feature we're unveiling here at IdahoSports.com where we are regionalizing the weekly prep casts podcast that we do so district one gets its own podcast district two well district three is so large there are so many schools uh there's got to be like over 60 percent of the uh like like the the way it's lines up is like there's probably like twice the amount of schools in district three than some of the other districts so we figured we'll we'll separate it with the bigger schools and then the smaller schools and i, I think this is going to be a good outlet yeah, I think so, too, because, you know, it really is hard to keep up with everything that's going on with all the schools when you've got that, especially when you start doing the 3A, 2A and 1A schools. They're all over the place, all over the Treasure Valley area. So, you know, to concentrate on the 5A SIC and we keep, you know, expanding with a why he knew this year. It just seems like not every year, obviously, but in the last few years, the last decade, we keep adding schools that they keep coming out there and it's fun to do. It's fun to have them here, but it's it's hard to keep up with. And then the 4A is always changing, and that scene is always going crazy. So it'll be fun to talk about teams like Emmett and you know Bishop Kelly and all those schools, Middleton. You know they're they are so good, they they are right on the cusp of being you know 5A quality. So it's going to be fun to do, and I'm looking forward to kind of keeping track of all of them. Yeah, when you look at the SIC between 5A and 4A, there's 20 teams total. Yeah. And some some of them are what I like to call elevator teams. They're they're always jumping up one floor. They're going down a floor. But they, there's always like that handful of maybe four or five teams that always seem to be riding the elevator, right? You know, right now, yeah, you're right. Right now, it seems like Meridian's riding that elevator. You know, I mean, they're up and down. You don't know exactly how good they're going to be, what they're going to do. Timberline with Ian Smart at uh, the head coach there, he is that same kind of a thing where uh, that Timberline, they came on strong to start last year and then kind of faded. They feel like they've got a good senior class this year. So they're right there smack dab in the middle. It'll be interesting to watch both those teams and see what they do. And then you got the guys that are at the top of the elevator all the time, the Rocky Mountains, the Mountain Views, the Eagles. You know, they're there. They're always going to be mentioned and everything. But you know what? Uh, and, and Rocky Mountain is crazy. I mean, when you look at the, t the guys they lost last year, you say, no way, they can't do anything. There's no way they can do anything this year. Well, they got guys coming back that are unbelievable. So Rocky Mountain's going to be right back. They just kind of regroup, put them back in there. They take guys. I used to say, you know, I covered Nebraska for years, and I used to say, don't hope that the starting running back gets hurt because the backup may be better. You know, and I remember that. And that happened one year when I was there. The last year I was there, Mike Rozier, who won the Heisman, but his backup was Roger Craig, who played for many, many years with the San Francisco 49ers in the NFL. And actually, I thought was a better running back. And Rozier didn't have really a great NFL career. But as you know, Roger Craig did. So you never you don't know those backups could be better than what the guys that started last year were. Yeah, it's it's an unofficial motto I've adopted the last three years. It's Rocky Mountains World, and we're all just living in it. <laughs> yeah, we are, aren't we? We really are. Mom used to knock on the door all the time. And, of course, the thing that's interesting is that early on in the season, again, and I don't know why the guys that make the schedules do this, but you've got Rocky Mountain Mountain View. You've got Eagle Mountain View. You've got Eagle Rocky Mountain, all kind of within the first three or four weeks of the season. So it, it's going to be the big guys are going to go up and bash each other for a while. And then they get not so much to say that they take it easy, but yeah, I mean, when you've got the Boise's and the Skyviews and a few others like that, 
who haven't proven to be, you know, all that and then some yet. Uh, those guys, yeah. So you got to get the big guys out of the way first, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. So let's uh, we'll we'll really dive into the nitty gritty of uh, you know what teams are looking good, who to watch yeah. out for as we get closer to the start of the season. Let's talk about for a second, Wayne. I know you don't like to talk about yourself too much, but we're gonna illuminate the spotlight. Now you mentioned you uh, covered Nebraska Cornhusker football. You you've kind of traveled the long path to get to Boise, right? You know, I I did actually actually I grew up in Connecticut and uh, and I was recruited by Idaho State and I was also a skier, alpine skier for Eastern Amateur Ski Association. And so uh, when I had a chance as an 18-year-old kid to come to Idaho, you know, your, your, your perception of Idaho is different than what it is in reality. And so uh, when Pocatello called in Idaho State, I, I looked at the big sky, thought that'd be great. I'd love to play there. So I, I flew out there and did the thing. And of course, when I landed uh, in Pocatello, I wondered what I had done. But, uh, you know, it was one of those things. So play a little bit at Idaho State. And that's where I started. I was the voice of the Idaho State Bengals for a couple of years on KWIK radio. Then I got into TV, Channel 8, Night Old Falls, KIFI, I think it, it is, and was with those guys. And then went to Salt Lake and then on to Omaha. And during all that time, I was with TV. I was an anchor for a sports anchor for those for those uh, stations. And obviously in Salt Lake, I covered a lot of different things. My first weekend in Salt Lake was ridiculous. Uh, we had a boxing master, Muhammad Ali. Ali was in town. We had uh, uh, everybody was just in town. It was amazing. Uh, Evil Knievel, who had just jumped the Snake River, you know, or tried to anyway, he didn't quite make it. He was in town. It just went on and on. Bob Hope was there. So my first weekend was like who's who of interviews, and it was a lot of fun. Ended up going to Omaha. And uh, from Salt Lake, and there I covered Nebraska for almost 10 seasons. Tom Osborne years, they were great. They were good. I don't know what's happened to them since. You know, I, I wish they keep thinking Scott Frost is going to bring him back, but he hasn't done it. But uh, so I covered them, and then I was ready to stay in Omaha. It was a done deal, and I got a call from uh, Channel 6 in Nampa. It's actually the Boise market. And they said, hey, we're going to try to do something that's called this Boise State Athletic Deal. And we're gonna we're gonna broadcast all Boise State games. Now, this was before ESPN even knew Boise was a city, and nobody was covering him. So we went in there and we did all the home games on tape delay. We played back that night, and we did all the road games live. We had our own production company. We went there, or we hired one out of LA or wherever we were going. We did all those games, and I did the play by play. And we had it for about four or five years, and then uh, we lost it to Channel Seven here in, in the Boise market. And so I left Channel 6 after about 12 years, went over to Channel 2, and we got it back and did it again. And there I was able to do Boise State, not only the play-by-play -play on TV, but also uh, color for KBOI radio with Paul J. Schneider. So Paul and I did for many, many, many years, basketball and football. And then finally, I just decided it was time to get out of TV. Um, they were moving schedules around and doing things, and I was working seven days a week and I moved into radio and I took over a station called uh, 630 The Fan. And we did high school football. We did a high school game of the week. And we had a lot of fun doing all that stuff. And so it was a kick. And so I've been in this market since 1982 and I've been doing a lot of different things. So anyway, so, it's been fun. So you, uh, you've you done broadcasts for Idaho State and Boise State. Have you done anything with the Vandals? I did. Actually, you know what? During that time when we lost that contract at Channel 6, you know, we had the Boise State contract. Uh, we were so upset that we lost it that we decided to do Idaho Vandal football. And so for four years, we did Idaho Vandal football. And uh, those are during John Freeze years. If you remember those guys, they were winning. They were beaten up on Boise State at the time. I think they won, what, 13 straight games against Boise State at one stretch. And people that are new to the area now go, oh, wait a minute, that couldn't be possible. That didn't really happen, did it? But it did. And uh, it was pretty ugly. And I remember one of the first wins was Houston Nutt up there and at, uh, at the Kibbe Dome won. And uh, that was one of the first times they kind of broke that stretch. But, yeah, so I did that. And so I'm really, I'm really one of the only guys that I could ever find. I'm sure there's somebody out there. But I was the only guy that could ever find that did was the play-by-play -play voice for Idaho State. For a while, play-by-play -play on TV and whatnot for, you know, Boise State and also for four years for the Idaho Vandals. We did all their home games and we did some away games and we did playoff games. 
And, uh, and of course, I did play by play for Creighton University, the basketball team when I was you know, in Omaha. And I did several games for uh, University of Nebraska. Uh, we did Omaha. We did uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma one year. And uh, that was a fun one. That was the year that Nebraska actually beat Oklahoma down in Norman. We did that game. And then they went on to play Clemson for the national championship in the Orange Bowl and lost that game. So eh, a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I've been asking around. I've been trying to find out if there's anybody that's done play-by-play for all three of the Division One universities in Idaho, and I haven't, I haven't found anybody yet. Way except yourself. nobody's called me on it. Nobody's called me on it. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's a unique situation for me or not, but it just kind of fell into place. You know, to be honest with you, at Idaho State, what was happening there was that I was working at KWIK Radio when the play-by-play guy got fired. And they needed somebody in a hurry. And so, you know, it was not like I was quality. They just picked me up and said, here, you're doing it. And whether you like it or not. And they threw me right in there. And I remember we went to Vermillion, South Dakota and, and did a game, Idaho State. And I think it's what South Dakota or South Dakota State, whoever's in Vermillion. I did that game. And so that was how I got thrust into it. And then, you know, I did basketball and football for a couple of seasons and then moved on. So. Yeah, it's uh, when you first start out in broadcasting, it's almost like going back to like when you were a teenager and you're trying to ask a girl out. It's all awkward and you're not really sure. But, but like, but then with seasoning, you get better. And so that's every broadcaster. And now you have developed into one of the top broadcasters in the, in the state of Idaho, uh, not just currently, but if you look at the cumulative career as well. And we're so glad that you're with us at IdahoSports.com. You're going to be doing uh, some audio only broadcasts of those 5A SIC games this fall. It's going to be super. Yeah, exciting. I did. I did. Uh, you know, our, our boss, uh, Paul Kingsbury, sent over the schedule today. It's a, just a proposal as to which games, you know, they're not completely, you know, it's not in, in cement yet, but uh, he did send it over. And I told him, I said, that's an aggressive schedule. I'm really excited about it. It really looks good. And I think, you know, the nice thing about it is, is that, you know, it's audio only. It's free. It's someplace you can go. It reminds me of my radio days, getting back to where we did a game of the week, you know, and we're going to do Thursday, Friday night games and things like that. And so the schedule will be fun, uh, fun to listen to. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy working with the kids. You know, in fact, I just got a thing back. Mike Altieri at Boise just sent me back all of his previews so I can do a preview. We're going to have previews. Let's talk about that for a second in a minute but I'm going to do a preview. And he just told me, say, Hey, when I want to thank you for everything you do for the kids. And I, I told Mike, I said, it's not a problem. I love doing it for the kids. That's what we do it for. When I do a game, I don't root for anybody. You know, all my kids, you know, basically uh, full disclosure, all my kids went to Bora high school, but none of them play football because all of them were daughters. So I mean, basically I had five daughters and two sons and none of the two sons didn't play football, but they played other sports. And so all Bora, so you might think I have an affinity for Bora. I don't now. Nobody's gone. So I just I just enjoy watching the kids play and have a lot of fun. And I I think it's so cool that they get an opportunity, these young kids, to have their names mentioned on whether it be radio or idosports.com in the paper. It, it's kind of fun for that. Yeah, so you mentioned uh, the statewide football previews that we do every uh, summer slash early fall here on IdahoSports.com. Mm-hmm. They're they're off and running. We've got probably about half of them done so far up on the site, including a lot of those 5A SIC teams, Wayne, and you are uh, writing all of those previews, which I think is a perfect fit because you're going to be the one that's actually seeing these teams up close and personal as well. Yeah, I'm looking for, and I know most of them over the years because when I was with the radio station, what we did was we did a 5A game of the, uh, of the week. You know, it was like we would like to do 4A games of the week and things like that but mostly those 5a games were right there so we took them we ran with them had a lot of fun with them and so i've created a relationship with all the coaches over the years and uh i you know i've really i really enjoyed what they they, they're just so good i mean they're so busy right now and yet they get back to you they let you know what's going on i i couldn't appreciate them anymore for all the help they give us so that we can write these previews and kind of give people an idea of what to expect in 2021 yeah, and, and we'll dive into that more next week, and that's going to be super exciting. Yeah, I think there's a misconception. People think that as broadcasters, oh, we've got this cush job, and we just show up and grab the roster and go. No, there's a lot of prep work that goes into calling a game. You have to know the teams. You have to know the players and the coaches. I mean, there's there's probably as much work before you even put on the headset as there is doing the actual game, right? Well, doing the actual game is you know is the easy part, really, because what you're doing is it's like reading a book. People say, how do you do play-by-play? And I tell him, I said, the best way I can describe it is like reading a book. You just read what you see happen out there. If the guy runs up the middle for three yards, that's what you say he does. He goes around the end for 50, 
you know, you get excited. You say, hey, he's gone and that kind of thing. But you're just reading a book. But you better know who's out there. And I'll tell you why. Because just when you least expect it, they'll kick off and the guy will run it back 103 yards, you know. Well, not in high school because they don't let you do that, you know. He'll run it back 99 yards. He'll catch it at the one and he'll run it back. And you better be running, ready because that game is underway now. You just had a big play. And if you didn't know who caught it or what happened or who blocked for him or what went down, you know, it's going to show up right away. So all the study you do beforehand is really important. And just get a feel for what to expect. And, uh, you know, that's, it takes just talking to coaches, talking to other people, getting to know the kids, even talking to the kids sometimes. I love talking to the kids. And I could sit and talk to you about the nuances of broadcasting for like probably like a couple hours, but I'm not sure that's going to be real compelling uh, audio for our audience. But real quick, uh, do, do you just want to explain to our audience the difference between doing a game on television or with video like we do at IdahoSports.com versus an audio only broadcast? There's there's a little bit of difference in, in how you go about doing your job, right? Yeah, there really is. I really like, you know. I like radio, but t TV is so much easier. You have to remember people are seeing what's going on. You don't have to describe every minute. You know, it's the old adage, you know, he's at the five, four, three, two, one, touchdown. You know, that's radio. You know, with TV, it's at, he's at the 10, touchdown. You know, and it's just that simple. I mean, you can still be excited and whatnot, but you got to remember they're seeing what's going on. You don't have to describe all of it. In fact, you can do too much. You can say too much. But in radio, you need to always and, and you know, when you're doing audio only on idosports.com, you are the eyes of the people that are listening. You need to tell them the best way you can to describe what just happened and what went down. And so that's what you try to do. And the other thing is that you're always trying to give them the score because they tune in. And what they want to know most is, OK, dummy, what's the score? <laughs> and if you sit there for half an hour and don't mention that it's 10 nothing, you know, they're going to go. Oh, this, who's this idiot? You know, he, he needed to tell me the score more. So you just need to be more informative. Whereas in TV, you need to shut up, you know, just <laughs> let, it, let the video run its course. Right. Yeah. Number, number one piece of advice to anybody that wants to get into broadcast, either say the score, you can never say the score too often. I've got a copy of your contract here, Wayne. It says we're paying you 10 cents a word for the broadcast. So of course you're going to be all about that audio only action, right? Yeah, I'm sure they're paying me 10 cents a word. Yeah, I'm sure. And I think it was something like, we'll give you a dime for your thoughts is all, you know, is what it was. Yeah, for sure. By the way, one of the things I want to do this year here on this podcast is I really want to do, uh, you know, in high school, you get a gold star, you know, when you're out there in a class. And I'm hoping to kind of recognize different players with gold stars. I know sports.com gold stars and, and recognize some of the talent we have. And, you know, I'm going to tell you right up, it may not be, the people you think it's going to be. So we're going to do a little bit differently and, and really kind of peruse everything that happened. Uh, it's going to kind of be a combination of how tough was the opponent you played. I mean, if you played a really, really tough opponent and maybe even lost that game, but you had a great showing and you did something nobody else has done against that defense, you know, or whatever, or offense, whatever the case may be. So we're going to hand out some gold stars. It's kind of like what ESPN does with the little, tabs on the helmet you know yeah, right. uh, but we want to recognize some people that way and and let you know because so many times it's the standout guys that get all the pub all the time so we want to find other people that you know are really working hard practicing every day getting up at six in the morning going to school going and putting on their football gear at three in the afternoon working out till six going home doing homework going to bed at 10 and getting up at five in the morning again that's the athlete that i know that's the athlete that i want to kind of expose and you're going to be in a perfect position to tell those stories because you're going to be talking to these players and these coaches up close and personal. And this is just a taste of what's to come. It's going to be every week. A uh, couple ways to get it. You can get the audio only at our website, idahosports.com, or download it wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, but also, if you want to see what we look like, and Wayne, I got to say, probably if we were doing a calendar of all the men of idahosports.com, you're, you're January. You're batting lead off, baby. Oh, my gosh. No. Uh, <laughs> you know you know what the nice thing about they they talk about being a veteran, but what it really, 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 really means is that you're getting old, you know, older and older and older. And, you know, it used to be when I see some of the pictures where I used to look like, well, you remember, oh, oh, gosh, uh, Anchorman. Remember the Anchorman? Yeah, Ron Burgundy. Hair. I had a mustache the whole bit. And I've got a picture of me. It looks a lot like Anchorman because we were all in that 60s. Hey, how are you doing? Ted Baxter mode. If you remember Ted Baxter from Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, now it's just kind of like, I don't care. I just want to go out there and have fun and enjoy it. You know, 
I don't get upset as much as I used to, you know, I just want to go out and, you know, like the girls say, we just want to have fun and enjoy the game. And from what I see, what Paul's put together for his schedule, there's a lot of big games, a lot of fun games, and I'm looking forward to being part of it this year. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an absolute blast. So uh, this is the SIC PrepCast, your weekly one-stop shop for everything you need to know about the 5A and 4A SIC right there in the Boise metro area. And again, uh, audio only. You can get it at idahosports.com or wherever you download your podcasts or the video before I got off on, on the tangent about the uh, calendar that we're going to put together. Uh, you can get the video form of these podcasts uh, at our idahosports.com youtube channel as well as our facebook page so you're not talking. really putting a calendar together no. <laughs> i was gonna say no i'm gonna put a skit on that one that's gonna not get a gold star you get no star at all for that i guess we'll let the people decide if if, if the people are clamoring for it great and if not then i guess our self-esteem all takes a hit but <laughs> what the heck you know we're up for anything that's right. So uh, with Wayne Dezubak, I'm Brandon Bainey. Thanks for tuning in to the inaugural edition. Next week, we're going to really hit it hard and, and start Ooh. talking about teams and players and matchups and all the fun stuff. So keep it right here. It is the SIC PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. Thanks for listening.